Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the garden. Uh, one of the most common questions that I get on this channel actually is about pollinators. It's not even about cut flowers at all. And it's, uh, what have you noticed are the favorite plants for pollinators in your garden? And lucky for you, uh, if you're interested at least, I have the answer. Getting right on into this, I decided to pick a mix of perennials and kind of bulbs and annuals so that there's a lot of diversity and a lot of selection. Basically, when I'm talking about pollinators, I mainly mean bumblebees, honeybees, butterflies, hummingbirds, uh, good flying things is what I mean. Uh, so basically, I'm going to start off with echinacea. I grow all the echinacea in my garden from seed. It is extremely easy to grow using the winter sowing method. I'll put a link in the cards here so you can click on that if you're interested. Uh, just regular purple coneflower bought these packets of seed from M.I. Gardener for 99 cents. Also, in the same bed, we have Bee Balm, also from M.I. Gardener. Anyway, uh, they love this stuff. Another one that was winter sown uh, last year took two seasons. The first season did not flower. Second season, they are flowering like mad, and they were covered with bumbles. And uh, anytime I can get plants covered with bumbles, I'm here for it. Uh, moving right along to the next flowers that are total pollinator magnets, we have Celosia. Hello, major favorite, Celosia. Beautiful in the cut flower garden. Also very, very, very attractive to bees and wasps. Now, do not plant this one if you do not want wasps in your yard. I personally don't mind them. Uh, they're just over there doing their thing. They're leaving me alone. They are on the Celosia. However, they are on this Celosia. Um, if I want to pick this Celosia for cut flowers, I have to get out very, very early in the morning or very, very late in the evening with a headlamp or a flashlight because uh, picking these is not going to be possible because the insects love them. Again, not a personal problem for me, but something that you may want to consider, especially consider where you're going to plant them. Like put them far away from your doors, far away from your patios, uh, just my personal experience. Also, of course, we have sunflowers. Sunflowers are a very, very popular option for the pollinators. Of course, you can buy the big, huge, giant ones, or if you're like me and you grow cut flowers, just the little cut flower ones. Those are the best, okay? At least in my opinion. Even though these sunflowers that I grow are pollenless, which means they do not produce any kind of pollen that can drop off on tables or anything like that, um, they still produce nectar. And it is very, very, very apparent by the vast quantities of bees that I get on these sunflowers. Now these sunflowers will produce seed if um, you know you have other pollen producing sunflowers nearby um, that can happen but mine don't that's one of the reasons I love them for cut flowers so much is that they do not produce seeds uh, because of that lack of pollen but a uh, very very solid choice especially if you're hoping to multitask with a cut flower garden and uh, looking to attract pollinators very awesome Moving on, we also have zinnias. Of course, I can't make a video without mentioning the zinnias because they are one of my all-time favorites. The bumblebees love these zinnias as well as our carpenter bees. I see a lot of carpenter bees on the zinnias as well with their big shiny butts. Um, but also hummingbirds, butterflies and hummingbirds. I cannot get enough flowers that the hummingbirds love. I love sitting out in the backyard and just watching them fly around the zinnias. Love it. That's one of the reasons I always plant some of the brighter color zinnias as well. Uh, big fan of those. So another great option, especially if you're a beginner gardener, uh, zinnias and sunflowers and celosias. Hello beginner gardeners. Yes, this is for you. You've got this. You can grow these. Uh, moving right along, we have some scabiosa as well. Uh, scabiosa is a cool season flower that means it can handle a little bit of frost and it likes temperatures a little bit cooler. These bloom actually in early to mid-summer for me and uh, they're a really really nice flower to get bloom in the garden very early in the season before anything else has bloomed like before the zinnias even start so very early in the season a good choice. Bumblebees love these. I love them too. They make beautiful cut flowers, really, really cute cut flowers. Not to mention the plants come in a wide range of colors uh, from light blue to white. 
uh, really dark maroons and peaches and salmons. Very, very pretty. And best of all, uh, these are a hardy annual. So uh, save the seeds, keep growing them year after year. Really, really solid option. The last one I wanted to talk about in terms of seed, uh, you know, flowers that we can grow from seed is the Chthonia. Uh, Chthonia is also known as Mexican sunflower. Uh, these grow very, very tall here in my yard. That's why I don't have much footage of them is because they're so tall. They're usually about 10 feet high, um, you know, wherever I grow them, it seems. But these are an absolute magnet to the bumblebees as well as the hummingbirds. Uh, they're not the greatest flower to use if you're looking for cut flowers because the stems are hollow. But stems are very unique in that they're velvety and volutinous and just very cool. They're, they also make a very nice quick growing privacy screen. That's the most common reason that I use them is because they grow up very tall and I can keep people from looking in my yard all the time when they drive by on the highway. I do have to stake these a little bit because sometimes they will blow over just because they're so tall, but otherwise a total winner in my book. They also will reseed very, very readily and come back uh, every year without very much help from me. So definitely a tough annual flower that I really, really like. Uh, moving on to the next uh, kind of section, I just wanted to mention a few bulbs uh, that I've noticed that the bees are insane about. The first one is alliums. I grew alliums for the first time last season, and while I really wasn't that impressed with the flower, these are drumstick alliums, I should say, while I really wasn't that impressed with the flower, the bees seemed to love them. In fact, at any point in time, if I considered kind of picking one of the drumstick alums for a cut flower arrangement, there were like 20 bees. There was a bee on every single flower. I'm not sure why it was so attractive to the bees, but they definitely are. So this is definitely a bulb that I'm going to be growing more of in the future because let's face it, uh, let's see, easy to grow, multiplies, looks nice in flower arrangements, tons of bees. Yes, it's ticking all the boxes. This one is definitely a winner for me. Uh, last but certainly not least, I did want to mention the dahlias simply because as you guys know, if you've been on the channel for any length of time, you know that I am completely obsessed with dahlias. Love them to pieces. One of my favorites. Love dahlias. And uh, the best part about growing dahlias this year, well, not the best part. I love the blooms and the, for the cut flowers. Don't get me wrong. But one of the best parts is since these bloom so late in the season, they were an absolute magnet for honeybees. Um, in the month of September and October, these things were absolutely covered in honeybees every single day to the point where it made picking some of them actually very, very difficult. And I would have to go out and pick early in the morning. And that's one of the reasons that we were able to save so many seeds from our dahlia plants last year is because we had a great pollination from all the wonderful honeybees that were in our garden. So um, if you are looking for flowers to uh, help the pollinators out, maybe these are some good options for you if you have a cut flower garden or you want to add to the ornamental bed. Hopefully this video was helpful. Um, my garden is strictly no spray. I don't spray anything. I just grow tons and tons of flowers for cut flower arrangements and I can definitely tell a difference in the numbers and populations of pollinators in my yard. I feel like over the past few years especially, things have gotten so much better. I'm seeing so many different types of good beneficial insects. I really, really love it. Um, hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, be sure to subscribe. We would absolutely love to have you. Of course, uh, everybody's always welcome to our little gardening community uh, here on the channel. I'd appreciate it so, so much. If you want to support us on Patreon, of course, the link to that is in the description below, as well as the link to our blog, uh, which has more information about all the stuff we post here. I am so, so appreciative of you. Thank you so much for watching. It really does mean so, so much to me. I hope that you are having such an incredible day, and I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys.